ASEA develops all of its products internally. We have a wide array of scientists on staff with different discipline and expertise um, to build products leveraging redox science. Um, we're gonna step into the manufacturing room now. Okay, so this is the first step of the manufacturing process right over here. This is the reverse osmosis unit. Um, this is very similar to what a lot of us have in our homes to soften the water. It removes the mineral content from the water. Um, those of you that have been taking ASEA for a long time know that redox signaling molecules are highly unstable. So any impurities in the water can hurt the shelf life of the product and its overall effectiveness when, when you're taking it. So it's really important that our product uses as pure water as possible. So this is the first step, reverse osmosis. After it goes through this system, it's gonna go through these tanks here. You'll notice they have a slight glow to them. This glow is coming from a UV bulb that emits UV light to eliminate any possible bacteria growth in the water. We'll go to the next step here after these tanks. Okay, so after the water has gone through the UV treatment within the storage tanks, it's gonna pass through this here where the water is further purified. This purification system is called the deionization system. It's pulling all of those trace minerals and metals out of the water and then finally polishing it before we use it in our process. This system is capable of producing about 200 gallons per minute of purified water for our manufacturing process. The water will be put into these small tanks We'll then add USP grade, US Pharmacopoeia grade salt, sodium chloride, and we'll perform the patented electrochemical process that makes the redox signaling molecules. Once the redox signaling molecules are made, they're transferred to the second tank for a pH balance, and then finally into the large tanks in the back where we dilute to 4,000 gallons or one batch of ASEA. That's about 15,000 bottles. Once it ends up mixed in that big batch there, 4,000 gallons, our quality team is gonna pull samples and send those to third-party labs for testing, as well as testing it here internally at ASEA. In order for that product to pass onto the packaging section that we'll cover here in a little bit, both of those tests have to match. It, once we know that they match and that the product passes specification, it's approved for transfer into the storage tanks down there on the other side of the room. And then they finally end up in these tanks here. You can see these tanks are connected to this pump. This pump transfers the product on an overhead line here into the fill room. And this only happens after all of the documentation has been reviewed and the product and the process has been approved by our quality staff. Once it gets that approval, it can be transferred using this pump system into the filler to be filled into the bottles and then the final packaging before it's shipped out. Now let's talk about how the product is packaged and bottled. This is the first stop on the bottling line. You guys can see this hopper here where the bottles are placed in. It'll go up this conveyor and onto the descrambling table. And then from the descrambling table, you can see every bottle is inverted right here. While that bottle's inverted, we blast HEPA filtered air into that bottle to make sure that it's clean before we go to fill it. That bottle then passes through and it's placed onto the conveyor and it goes into the fill room. We're gonna go into the fill room now. Um, I'm gonna walk to the other side here so we can go in the front so you guys can see it. We'll have to put our uh, hair nets back on because it's a clean room. So we'll head on that way right now. Okay, so where we were just at, you can see the bottles coming on the conveyor on that side there through the wall. They'll go over this bottomless transfer onto this conveyor table, down the conveyor belt and into the fill machine. So the fill machine is capable of filling about 45 bottles per minute. It's being fed right now on this overhead line from the manufacturing room. We talked about those holding tanks a little earlier. We fill again, 45 bottles a minute is a good run rate for us. We fill six bottles at a time using a piston system filler. Once the bottles are filled, they'll go through, you can see right here, the capper 
where they'll get the caps on the bottles. You can see the caps flowing down right there during the track. If you guys come to the other side, you'll be able to see it kind of get applied. So if you look right there, you can see the bottles coming out with their cap. And then they go through this photo gate right here that will check if the cap is on there tight and level. It's gonna go over this bottomless conveyor where we print the lock code and expiration date on the bottom of the bottle. The bottle then runs more conveyor to a timing cork screw here where the sleeve is inserted over the outside of the bottle. So here's where the bottles are coming out from that fill room. They're gonna pass through this steam tunnel here. The steam is gonna shrink that sleeve around the outside of the bottle. You can see it comes out here tight around the outside of the bottle. We'll blow off the excess condensed steam off the bottle to make sure it's dry. The cap passes through one more heating section to make sure that it's good and tight around the cap. We use the sleeve as the tamper-proof evidence portion of the packaging, so we want to make sure that that neck is really tight on top of the cap. You'll notice there she's checking every bottle to make sure it's got a lock code and an expiration date and that the, the product is in the bottle, that it's not an empty bottle that we're shipping out. So the boxes will go through our taper here to close up the box. The palletizer is gonna take individual rows of boxes, and as it builds that pallet, it's gonna shrink wrap the pallet and then kick it out onto this roller system when it's done. And then our warehouse staff can pick up that pallet and prep it for shipping to whatever country or destination it's, it's headed towards. I wanna talk a little bit now about the topical products. So this is made in this room here. So you'll see a reactor that's very similar to what we use inside of the ASEA room, but it's larger. That reactor is larger because our topical products have more redox signaling molecules in them. And so more redox signaling molecules requires a larger reactor. Once those redox signaling molecules are made, they're mixed in with those other ingredients to make our product. Once the product is finalized, once it's done, the quality team will take a sample, just like we do with the ASEA Redox supplement, and we'll send it to a third-party lab for testing, and they will validate that those products pass all of our high standards for product quality. Once the product has been passed by both our internal quality team and the third-party lab, the product is transferred through the wall here into these fill rooms. You guys can see we're running Renew 28 right now. It's coming off of that machine, and we'll go inside here in a sec so you can get a close view of it. Here is how the tubes come to us in these little flats from our manufacturer. They make our tubes for us. The operators will take a sleeve of this, and they'll throw it up into this load boy here that will supply the tubes to the fill station. So this machine comfortably runs at about 37 tubes per minute. You can see the, how fast it's able to pull those tubes from the load boy to continually feed the tubes. This uh, machine here is pulling product from the storage tank that has received the product from the manufacturing room behind. So you guys can see the tubes coming off of the conveyor right here. There's a check station that Ed will be periodically weighing the tubes to make sure that they pass fill inspection. Okay, so here's the conveyor belt where the Renew 28 is coming out from the machine in the fill room. These ladies here are cartoning for us, inspecting the tubes before they go into the cartons. After the tube has been placed in the carton, that carton's gonna run underneath a printer here where we'll print the lock code and the expiration date. It goes across the checkway here where it's once again weighed. If the product does not have enough or has too much product in it, it will be rejected into this bin here. It's then finally grabbed by these two here and placed into the boxes and palletized for shipping. Redox Gold has been an amazing new product for us here at ASEA. It has revolutionized the way that people manage their discomfort and recover after workouts and exercise. Our product, Redox Gold, is a new redox topical gel that is targeted to enhance your body's ability to recover and combat discomfort. 
Being that it is a topical product containing redox signaling molecules, there are some similarities in how we manufacture this product compared to Renew 28. It's even made in the same room that we make Renew 28 in. But there are some key differences. Redox Gold is thicker than Renew 28. Additionally, it has gold microparticles and flex in order to act as the catalyst to focus redox signaling molecules to provide comfort and recovery. Once this product is mixed and manufactured, our quality team will sample the product and send those samples to third-party laboratories for testing. The product is transferred into the fill room where the product is filled inside of a tube and then packaged and prepped for shipment so that we can distribute it all around the world. Every single process that we have gone through today is closely controlled and audited regularly by agencies that issue certifications for this facility. This Redox Center is an NSF certified FDA listed facility and the quality of our product and our production facility shows that. Thank you so much for coming on this tour with me today to take a look at how we manufacture life-changing redox-based products.